So we have lived in our camper full time for five years, but if you guys have been with us for a minute, you know, I think last year we finally upgraded our toilet to the Dometic 310. Is it the 310, That's Mike? That's correct. 310, and it's the Swirl Flush. We really like it, honestly. But unfortunately, our seal is leaking again. The good news is Mike realized recently that you don't have to take this toilet completely apart to replace the seal. So we've turned off our water. I've got my gloves on so I'm not, you know, bare hand in this stuff. Um, viewer discretion advised going forward because it's going to be a little yucky when we pull out the seal even though the toilet's clean. So my plan is pull out the seal. We got a new one over here and we're going to put the new seal back in. Okay, got pretty much all the water out here. I guess I just pull it out. You can just yank that seal and pull it right out. Yank her out. Carefully. <laughs> it's like I don't want the splashback. Oh, there it goes right off of it. Okay. Don't look. Look. Okay. So I'm gonna grab the new seal real quick. I'm gonna have Mike do it because my hands are dirty. Grab the new seal. <laughs> all right, new seal. I'm a little nervous about this part. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll try to hold down the, the flush pedal. Oh, I can hold the flush pedal. Hey, how about pedal that? Here. Teamwork. You'll hold the flush pedal down perfect. All right, and then I just put it back on this little, there's like a little ridge down here. Oh gosh, what happens if I drop this? Um, it's lost in the block tank forever, <laughs> so don't drop it. All right, got it on the lip here. So you're kind of just feeling around the edge. Yeah for the indentation where the seal is sitting. Yeah, because the edge of the seal has like basically a lip on it, I guess. And then you're just pushing that new seal into that. Yeah. Oh, good night. Go on there. Hey, okay. Okay. Let loose, let's see. Ah! I mean, it looks like it's on there. You see how it kind of gets stuck on there? Yeah. Pull up the water pump and see. She's holding! Look at that. Dude, that was so much easier. That was a lot easier. Oh my goodness. Can I take these off? Are we done? Was that it? I think that's it, kid. Dude, with our last toilet, we had to like turn off the water, unhook the water, take off the top, and then put the new seal on. That's super easy. Dude. No. <laughs> if you guys have a Dometic 310, I would recommend going ahead and buying these and keeping these in your camper in case of something like that happens. The nice thing about this is that it is a two pack, so now I have an extra one in case I need to replace it again. And if you guys need to replace the seal on your toilet, I'll put a link for this stuff down below. So we've had some additions to the camper recently, including bigger propane tanks, battery, solar. So some of that stuff has weighed a little bit. So one of the good things about being home is that we are able to purge some of this stuff and leave some of our winter stuff behind. So Steph just took out a tote full of winter boots and some clothes and some other stuff that we don't need in the camper anymore. And we are leaving that here at her parents' house. So we are offsetting some of the weight of that stuff. I've already had some questions from people about how much more weight has we've added to the camper recently. And I don't know the exact number, but offsetting some of that weight um, is something that we are staying conscious about as we're purging the camper a little bit today. strip lights have been slowly falling off for the past several months probably and while we don't use them that often I don't really want to take them all the way off because they are functional if we do want to use them so Mike did some research again if you are not in a Facebook group for your RV join it if you have the capability because you get all kinds of helpful information so he did some research I'm gonna ask him what his plan is because I have no idea. Okay, so we're gonna start with the lights here. 
And I looked online a little bit and it looks like most people just use regular super glue. And I went and bought, this is just Gorilla Glue, but it takes a little bit of time for it to cure. So I think what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of rubbing alcohol with the rag, clean the back of the strip off the best that I can and the camper. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this on and cover it with painter's tape to hold it against the camper because if I don't do that, it's just gonna slide off. My hero. Hey, thank goodness we're here where <laughs> her dad has all the tools and equipment. It's so true. What's my job? I think. <laughs> I think that I'm going to have to put glue on this mm -hmm. and then I'm going to hold it here. And you want me to put tape on? And then we can kind of work together and put the tape on it. Okay. All right, side two. That side is not near as bad, but I do see a little spot down here where we might as well add some. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. All right. All right, so yesterday we put the glue and tape on these front lights and I let them sit overnight and I'm gonna pull the tape off and check them and make sure they turned out okay. They look okay from the ground, but I can't really tell. I'm doing this with one hand. Can I open the ladder with one hand? Oh, limitless talent, guys. That looks pretty good. Let's do the poke test. Let's poke it a little bit. I'm losing my lighting. That yeah, seems all right, actually. All right, let's check this side. This side wasn't nearly as bad as the passenger side. Okay. I'd say that's pretty good. Hopefully that fixes it. That was a pretty quick and easy way to do it. I would recommend if you do that to use tape and let it sit overnight so that it can cure and hopefully that fixes the problem. With that being done, we only have a couple more projects left on the camper and then we'll be ready to hit the road. We'll make sure to keep you guys up to date with those projects and what's going on with us next time.